So good day. So this video is to summarize the class we had yesterday. So um, I think it's going to be fine if I record a summary of this forever. I'm just going straight to the point to make things clearer to us. So that's the end of this video. So in the class we had before yesterday, we looked at MongoDB and Mongoose. And we looked at Mongoose schema in the course of that class too. So in this particular one, we we are making a request to this guest user and we are passing the ID as params. So if we want to fetch a user ID, we can go to our database and get the ID of that particular user. We can copy this ID if you want to fetch this user. And if you want to fetch this, we copy this ID. So I'll copy this now. And easy to fetch a user. So come to this place and put it here. So we are making a get request to this URL. This is going to fetch the user for us. Let's move on. Now we also talked about having more than one schema. You see, when you have a database. In your database, you have many collections. You know, a collection, as I described earlier, a collection is like a section to keep related documents. So, how do you know whether you should create a new collection or not? How? You can know by you saying, just sit down, think of, when you, when you think of a structure, how you realize that, or when you think, of, think about a particular entity, how you realize that that entity is now having different attributes, different characteristics, then you know that, oh, let me make this a, let me make this a collection. For instance, let's say I picked a user. That user has a name. That user has an email address. That user has a password. Then you should know that, oh, no, I should have a user collection then when you let's say you pick a uh, let's say cost when you realize, oh, I have a cost type to I have the I was got cost code I have a cost coordinator things like that you should know oh cost should be a collect collection should be a collection that will be standing on its own so that should help you to know that oh you should have a collection when you realize that a particular entity is having characteristics and it's then you should make it a collection. So in that class, I explained what a collection is. Then uh, we could have a user, what is it? Okay. So this is a cost collection. This is a cost collection. So this cost has a cost code, this is a cost type to then let's remove this one now. A cost code and a cost type to then we could add it. after creating a schema, next is to make a model out of it. So here we are making a model out of this schema. And of course, as I explained earlier, in your database, this is going to pluralize its it's going to pluralize and this will be in small letter. The names in the collection name in your database. Is written in small letter and it's going to be in plural form. That's my problem. So I want to save a new cost now. So there's a register cost. Okay, for now, remove this. So when you are registering a cost, you are, costing, you are getting a um, title and a code from the front end. Then you create new cost and you save it. It's going to send this response back to the front end. Cost added successfully. But then there is a little issue here. There's a little issue. The issue is that although we are adding a cost, you don't know the student that is adding that cost. You don't know. You don't know. So to solve that problem, we created, when we talked about uh, relationship. So what you're going to do is this. 
you can add something to the course schema that points to the student that owns that course. So when you're adding a course, you're going to add the student ID. You're going to add the ID of the student that own that course. This can be any name of your choice, but you just call you call it student because it owns it owns student ID. It owns student ID. So when you are creating a new course, you are going to add the ID of the student that own that course. So what this is going to do is you are saying that let me take the property course student. The data type is the same data type as this ID here. You see this is object ID. So it's the same data type as the one here. You're saying the data type should be the same as that one. And you are referencing the model name of students. That is, you are referencing this, where is it? Okay. You are referencing the student. Okay. You are referencing this student, this model name. So what is going to do is, we will save the ID of the student here. When we had a new course, we will save the ID of the student that owns that particular course, the ID comes here. So with that now, when we had a course, we, when we had a course, we are going to save the student ID. This like points to the model, and don't forget, it's not the schema name, it's the model name, whatever name you put here, that's what you're going to put it points to the model name okay so let's now have a course again this time around uh, by adding the student's id the id of the student that owns that course so here whenever i want to add a course we are going to pass the student id this id here stands for the student id then You are, we destructure this here. We get a new course. We are saying new course dot student equals to this. That is rec dot params dot id. So we are saving the value of this student. And remember, we have a student. Uh, we have a student property here. So we are saying the value of this student. You can also call it student id if you want to. I think that would be much better. I'll call it student ID. Let's call it student ID. So you are saying the value of the student ID is it cost, 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 cost. So this becomes student ID. So you're saying the value of the student ID is this. Then you save it. So after saving it, you send this back to the front. And so let's now assume that you want to fetch a cost. Okay, if you go to the database now, let's go to the database and see something there. If you go to under courses, so you're going to see students. You know, if it was to be student ID, you know, we've changed it to student ID now. This would be student ID. And you can see it's, it holds the ID of the student that is there for that course. So now we have a course, and we now have the ID of the student that owns this particular course. Let's move on. Next is, whenever you want to fetch a course now, you can fetch the student that owns the course with it. You can do that. So, fetch course. When you fetch a course, you are making a request to this place, and you want to add in this course ID, you want to fetch a particular course. Then, after fetching, you now use this populate. So you know we change that to student ID. This is now student ID. What you are doing here is this. Help us to fetch this course, the ones that owns this course ID, the one you are getting from the front. And help us to fetch this, then populate it to the student ID. So what is populate is going to do is that if you pick that student ID present in this particular course, then it goes to the student uh, student database, uh, student collection, it goes to the student collection, then add the information of the student that owns that course. It's going to add it to it. So this is the results. Okay, I'll change it back to student because, uh, okay, we can also leave it as student ID. 
I think it's our student ID. So let's add a new course. Can I add a new course? If you want to, I can register classes. Can say this is three. Okay. Let's say it's still the same student. Okay. Let's say um. We have this, register this now, cause I did successfully. When we go to database, we should see that's there now. So now we have two courses here. So let's fetch this course. Then we will now try to fetch the student with it. So we're going to make a request to that URL. Fetch cost. Then we put the ID here. Then we fetch it. So you can see it's fetching that with it. It's fetching it with it, and that's because of this one. That's because of this populates. You are saying populate with student ID. So it's fetching it with the student ID. This is the information of the student that owns this course. I think this is a summary of what we did yesterday. Then let's now go to entity relationship. Entity relationship. Now uh, let's look at the relationship between the entity relationship is relationship between two collections, or better still two schema. Okay, two schema. We want to establish a relationship between this schema and this schema. Now we have one to one relationship. One to one relationship is if one of this, one of the first schema can have one of the second schema, and one of the second schema also can have one of the first schema. I come again. If one of the first schema can only have one of the second schema, and one of the second schema also can only belong to one of the first schema, then that relationship is one to one. One to one, one to one. Uh, an example of that is this. Let's say, in in my application, that like the way we want our application to be. Let's say we have a schema for students. Then let's say we have another schema for matric number. Let's just assume. Just assume. Let's say we have, we have one for students. We have the schema for students. So under the student schema, let's say we are getting the that's a student schema. So under the student schema, let's say we are getting the uh, name of the student, the department of the student. Let's say the school uh, no, department. Let's say let's stop it. Then we also have another for matric number. Let's say my, uh, in this particular school now, in our hypothetical school, a matric number, we want to have the, the first two characters, I don't know, how, like, let's say this matric number, let's say it has some codes, it has some alphabets, it has some other things, some characteristics of this matic number that defines this matic number. Let's say this matic number can have many things like that. And let's say you decide to make it a schema on its own. Let's assume. No. Yes, you decide to make it a schema on its own. Now, a student can only have one matic number. And a matic number can only belong to a student. So in this case, the relationship between the two is one to one. One to one. And when the relationship between two schema like this, when the relationship is one to one, then it means that you can easily match the two schemas together as a single schema. Meaning, I can now delete this and put the matic number here as part of this first schema. When the relationship is one to one, 
then you can do this. You can match the two schemas together as a single entity. It's not a must. If you still think you want to separate it, it's fine. But it means you can. It is possible for you to match them together. Let's look at another one. The one to many. In one to many relationship, you use it when one of this one of a particular schema can have many of the other schema, but one of the second schema can only belong to one of the first schema. I can't again. One of the first schema can have many of the second schema, but one of the second schema can only belong to one of the first schema. An example is a student and department. Students, let's say we have another schema for department. Now let's say let's let's say department is the first one. Department schema. Just saying. Now, a department can have many students. That's another department. We have the name of the department. We have the issue of the department. Another information. So a department can have many students. But a student can only belong to one department. I come again. A department can have many students. But a student, a student can only belong to one department. So the relationship between these two is one to many. That is one department, one department to many students. And in fact, that's the that's what usually termed the ideal relationship. One to many. Then the next is many to one. Many to one is just the opposite of one to many. Many to one is the opposite of one to many. If you are looking at it from the student first before the department, uh, sorry, the department first before the student, it is one department to many students. That is one to many. But if you are looking at it from the student first before the department, that is many to one. Many students belong to one department, just like the inverse. One to many or many to one. Then lastly, we have the many to many. But before I move to many to many, as much as possible, let your schemas be one to many. Like that is the relationship between two schemas. Let them be one to many. Let's say we have these two schemas now. We have the department schema and the student schema. This is what you can do. You can now come here and add the student students just the way we did here like this just the way we did here good so you can add the student id here so this department can have many students so this is going to i'll just copy this here what you want to do is uh you want a situation where maybe when you fetch a department, you want to fetch all the students there. So by adding it like this, it makes it possible. So instead of, because many students are in this department, it's not going to be student ID, it can be students ID because it doesn't belong to just one student. And because you are saving multiple students here, it should be in an array like this. So you are placing this in an array. What you are saying here is that it's going to be an array of this structure. And each of them, each structure here references the student model. So it's going to reference the student model like this. So this is one to many. This is one to many. So whenever you do this, you can always push IDs into this student ID array. You can push as much as you want. Next is many to one. The many to one is what we did or what we did not quite long. In that case, instead of saving this here, you save it on this place. So department ID. So when you register a student, you keep the student, you keep the department ID. So it's going to be of this structure now. I'll copy this, paste it here. Then you reference the department schema. So when you are saving a student, you save the ID of the department of that student immediately on that student. So when you fetch a student, you can also fetch the department with it. This is 
many to one. So uh, how we how we advise that you pick in most instances you only need one of them. Either you put it here, like we like we just did uh, by putting it in an array, or you put it here so as to establish a relationship. What you're trying to do is you want to establish a relationship between these two schema. Then lastly, many to many. Many to many means when many of the first can have many of the second. And many of the second can also belong to many of the first. It is not ideal. It's not ideal. Uh, a good example is this. Let me say, um, when you have many to many, what you should try to do is try to break it down to one to many or many to one. Try to break it down. Think about how you can break it down. In most situations of many to many, it is usually due to, like in most circumstances now when you see many to many, it's usually because of um, maybe there is a missing information, maybe something is missing. I'll give an example. Let's assume in our training, in this training now, a student can register for many courses. You know, that's not ideal in, in like in, an, in, in traditional institutions, it's not ideal. In fact. But we are just saying that let's assume in our training, a student can register for many courses. And also, one course, a single course, can also be offered by many students. So in that case, the relationship between the student and the course now is many to many because a student can register for many courses and one course also can also be offered to many students. So the relationship in that case is many to many. You need to avoid it. When you have many to many, you should be thinking about how do I break this down to one to many or to many to one, either of the two, it's fine. So. You can now start thinking uh, a solution or another part would be maybe to bring in receipts. Receipts. So when you bring in receipts, when you register for a course, for a particular course, you get a receipt for that course. So a student can have many receipts. So the relationship between student and receipt now is one to many. And a receipt now can only belong to one student. Students can't share, like many students cannot share a single receipt. A receipt will belong to one student. So the relation between receipts and student is one to many. Then let's now look at the relation between receipts and courses now. Remember, what you're trying to do is we realize that there is many to many relationship between students and course. So we are trying to look up for a way to break it down. And I said that when you realize that you are facing the many-to-many -many relationship, then you should start thinking about, you should start asking questions. Most likely, surely a sign that you are missing something. So, we've looked at the students to receive. So let's now look at the seat to courses. The seat to course, the relationship between the two of them. Now, one receipt is to is to one cost. Okay, so if I make payment now for just one receipt, is is to one cost. Then a cost can a cost have many receipts? A student to receipts is one to many. Okay, then when you have a receipt, okay. Okay, look at it this way. Maybe, maybe the student wants to make payment for many courses at a time. Let's assume. Yes, it's possible. It's possible. Let's say the student wants to make payment for many courses at a time. It means that the receipts, a single receipt now, can belong to many courses. I mean, remember, it's in regards to a single student now. All we are saying here is in regards to just one student. So one receipt now can be used for many courses. A student can present one receipt for many courses. So, but then 
a single course, a single course, you know, cannot have many receipts from one student. So it just depends on, look at this from that angle. Or let's assume also that students are allowed to pay part payments, to pay in part. Then we are back to the many-to-many -many relationship. You start thinking again, how do we solve this? But let's assume no part payment is allowed in the training. So in that case, the relationship has been broken down to one-to-many. The relationship has broken down to one-to-many. So the relationship between the six and courses now is one to many so instead of two schemas initially initially we were looking at two schemas that was the student and the courses now we have three schemas the student the receipt and the courses we have three schemas the middle one the one in the middle is meant to break the view of one to many many to many one to one uh sorry the one in the middle is meant to break the view of many to many and turn it to one to many and many to one. That is the answer of the one in the middle. So when you have that, just thinking of, start thinking about that. Now try to avoid it as much as possible. Try to avoid it. But depending on how your application is, you can put this here and also still put this in the student. I'll say to something like this. Students. ID Thank you. you can still put it here. Well, as much as possible, I remember that you avoid it. You know, here you are duplicating data. The data is here, you are still keeping this here again. But some applications might warrant it. Just look at how look at the ease of getting data. The end of doing all of this, just look at the best for your application was the ease of getting data. Think about it after you thought about it. Then pick the one you want. You want to use. Are you using this here, or are you using this here, or in very rare circumstances, are you using the two, which are we advise against? But in very rare circumstances, you may need to maybe want it to be very very easy to fetch data. You can use this, but then, like I said, are we advise against it? So, I hope you understand these things better now. If there's any question, let me know. So, next class we continue from this place. Thank you so much.